It's really great to have Joel Jackson here who plays the legendary newsman, Charles Bean. It must have been a wonderful thing for you to do to get into this role. It, it was, and the more we found out about it and the more we shot, the, the deeper the picture became and the more fun we had really crafting that as a, as a picture. Was... One of the things I loved about the crafting of the character was the, the use of your voice. Uh, there's no sort of standard Australian accent involved here. What, what you capture so brilliantly, I, I felt, is the, the kind of scholarly, slightly dry quality that the Bean's writing has, but the, the also rounded cadence that the writing has. It's a, it's a really, it's a beautiful bit of acting in that respect. We want it to be uh, really, I want it to be really precise. And Bean's accent was a bit, you know, he had an RP touch and was quite, he was raised in, in London and went to Oxford University and studied over there and did all those kind of things. So I want it to be intelligent, but I wanted it to be relatable from an Australian's perspective nowadays, but still understandable in an international context. So it was great crafting that with Michael Reimer and then getting a bigger picture of the difference of Bean to, say, the soldiers and, say, then the military class of the English. And, really defining what his voice said about him. But uh, did you ever feel that, that this man was sort of slightly on the Asperger's spectrum in that he, there was this inability to really connect with the men around him? Yeah, he hid in his words. And you can mm. see it in his diaries and how really well thought out those sentences were. But yeah. in his actions and how he conveyed himself every day, they weren't, they were impulsive. And so he, you know, he, and as soon as the men around him started to really become affected by what else was happening, everyone needed someone to hold on to. Yeah. And yeah. being held on to the memories of these men and the items of these men, which later became the Australian War Memorial. Yeah. But, you know... I mean, he's a very yeah. significant guy in our history, isn't mm. he? Oh, but, he's... I mean, I think, you know, this clip sort of shows his awkwardness as a man. Yeah. They still... Uh... Giving you the silent treatment, sir. Not always. Occasionally they go out of their way to insult me. Maybe you should try winning him over with a joke. People like jokes. Really? Do you know any? No, I know plenty, sir. What are you after? Clean or dirty? Not sure. What's more popular? Oh, dirtier the better, sir. You hear the one about the man who couldn't tell the difference between Vaseline and putty? His windows fell out. Get that off as quick as you can. That's one thing I never knew about Charles Bean. He had his own typist with him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, him and Arthur Basley then went on to write and collate the Anzac book, which is a huge resource for RSLs, and, and then all the reference books that you see, the 27 million words of Charles Bean, oh, were edited. Yeah, 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 edited by that man, Arthur Basley. So, lifelong friendship. Tell me, this is your first major role after leaving NIDA. Mm. How, I mean, you landed quite safely, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It took us a while to get there, but as soon as... You know, the hard work that you do behind the scenes at NIDA and, and little bits and pieces that you trust will put you in good stead, it, it did. And as soon as you walk on set and you look in the eyes of... My birthday, July 7th, we had Sam Worthington and Hugh Dancy doing mm. this beautiful scene where no words were spoken. And it's moments like that where you, you, know, you kick yourself going, wow, we, mm. we really, really did something special. But to work with those guys and Michael Reimer and the scripts that you had, you really couldn't put a foot wrong, really. It was... I thought actors came out of NIDA expecting unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I worked as a landscaper again for a little bit. But, um, no, we, we auditioned for five different characters within Deadline Gallipoli. And then um, it was kind of, we like you, but we don't know where you're going to fit, so how about you try this? And Which one did you want? I'd, I love Charles Bean. I wrote an essay on him when I was about 15 years old. Right. Yeah. And it's a big part of my Anzac education with my grandfather. He yes. has all of Charles Bean books, and so as soon as I read the script, that's, oh, wow. that's what I wanted. Oh, that's there were a more, fabulous connection. There yeah. were more correspondents, though, than Bean. Shall we look at one of the other correspondents? Oh, yeah. It is heart-rending work to write what I know to be untrue and to confine myself to giving a descriptive account of the useless slaughter of thousands of my countrymen when what I wish to do is tell the world of the blunders that are being daily committed on this blood-stained peninsula. Oh, 
Dancy really scrubs up well against all you Aussies, doesn't he? Yeah, especially with the moustache. Yes. yes. No, he was wonderful. And he really brought um, the level of dedication and, and that perspective from uh, a different audience too. We, we, as soon as he came on set in Charles Dance, we became aware that the story could be broader and received in different audiences to Britain and to US. So how do we mould the performances to make it natural? Just how difficult did the correspondents find uh, you know, the, 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 the fact of reporting the war, given censorship and the, the conditions in which they found themselves? Well, even that you had to write it down on a piece of paper, then go to the editor and he'd, or the censor, he'd do it and you have to come back and then two days later it would end up in the rooms ready to be communicated. So the time difference that it took but the well, it was a very and... frustrating situation for being, you know, mm. because uh, Bartlett is letting out stuff, not only pinching your, your pinching, work, stealing, stealing, stealing right stories, the That's but a great you know, sequence. getting it out through London uncensored. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I think you, you sense Bean's frustration and through this drama for different reasons. Like for Bean, it was because he was the only Australian correspondent allowed to go, and fought so hard to be there. Whereas for Bartlett, it was his second. I think it was his second war. And yeah, so for yeah. him it was more of a, oh, yes, but that, you know, changes rapidly. Well, I've just packed more champagne this yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knew it was safer to stay on the ship. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Beans out there in the action. I mean, how did you find the action stuff? Was that difficult? I loved it. I mean, I think I went down to about 78 or 80 kilos from 94 yeah. to, to slender down and look like a studious bean. But it was so much fun, so much fun to dig in deep into the the history and, and really tell that side that we haven't seen and no. or that you don't get from the yeah. Australian War Memorial. It's all clean cut and educational. But to show what built the passion and fire to then build these huge monuments was, it was such a wonderful experience. Well, in a way, Bean also exemplifies the myth of Anzac, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Look, Joel, it's been fantastic. Yeah that you were able to join us today. No, and I you think, you know, we ought to go out on you representing one of those moments in the series. Thank you.